preparation for NAF and the standby phase for NAF in 2015 needs a lot of preparation. It's a training cycle of almost 12 years and in our headquarters we set it up with three major exercises. The first one run already in May this year. We have made some important lessons learned regarding to our battle rhythm and to our command and control system that is available for us. I think we are on the right path. We have made a lot of improvements. If you walk around and look at the people, how the process runs, that's fine. And the final phase is the third exercise in November this year, where we will support our higher headquarters during their equivalent and certification phase. It's been seven years since the first GNC took over lead for the NATO response force. The world has changed. NATO has changed. The world is changing all the time, and what we see today in this international environment is uh, of our concern. This is why we are preparing on a solid basis for the NAF. And you are right, it's not only the world that has changed, the headquarters has changed also. We have some experience from the last NAF circles we had, but in the meantime, most of the people have changed. So we have to start again to prepare ourselves and to be ready with this headquarters to lead military operations. Out of Wales, there is talk of the spearhead. How does this impact your core in the NRF? I don't know yet. This is a political decision. We will see how this develops. To my understanding, this very fast joint task force will be part of the NRF and then part of the land component or the joint element. I have no detailed information about it yet. You have almost a thousand military here from 12 nations to include the United States. What are your challenges? Running a headquarters according to the SOEs and SOIs, having the right communication channels established, and most important, we need to know each other before we need each other during a real mission. One thing I've noticed a lot in this exercise is the introduction of civilians on the battlefield. It seems to be a top priority. Why? Civilians are part of our area of responsibility and our mission area. We have developed a specific uh, arrangement. We have an interagency center to cooperate with all the issues and uh, cooperation with governmental and non-governmental organizations. We have established, let's say, a meeting cell for all these elements to talk with us and to talk about their needs and to find out what support they can get from us and what support we need from them. This is an essential part, and I would say this communication element this part of our structure is not only an organizational question, I would say this is part of our genes, which is a different view. So whenever we talk about operations, we think them comprehensively. This is a brand of this headquarters, and it's about our mindset. My primary audience is an American audience. What should they know about this core, the NATO response force? Talking about Americans, it's easy for me, because I'm half American. Believe it or not, believe it or not. I spent two years in the United States in the heartland of America, in uh, Leavenworth, Kansas, and I'm very proud that I feel almost like an honorable citizen of Leavenworth, Kansas. This was a good time for me. I personally have no problems with that. I know how Americans think, I know how they feel sometimes, and I know what their approach is to military operations. So this works. And I think there is not a huge difference. We rely very much on the U.S. support and we know that we learned this also during this exercise that this is a professional army with professional soldiers where we can learn a lot from. What should America at large know about NATO? I mean over time since the end of the Cold War we see a huge change in Europe. In the past we had a lot of American elements, soldiers, men and women living in Germany, living in Europe. This has changed a little bit but the world has changed also. So my key message would be, don't forget us in Europe, and don't forget that America and the US plays a huge role also in the NF, and that they play a huge role also in our struggle and, and our uh, approach to provide a safe and secure environment and a safety and peaceful world. In this next year coming up, you will be facing a lot of challenges, some you know of, Russia, the Ukraine, Syria, ISIS, others you don't. Are you prepared? I don't know what the developments are in the future. Nobody has a crystal ball. What we can do is follow these developments in the world in close cooperation with our higher headquarters. And uh, if we reach the final goal at the end of the year, at the end of the preparation race, to be ready to lead military operations rapidly, 
comprehensively and decisively, and I believe in that, then we are ready.